time said change, so must we that the new time requires new response to new challenges. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Glad to be with you once again on the program as we answer the call. I am Rashida Abubakar, your regular host. As the world takes measures to contain another deadly COVID-19 variant, Omicron, the federal government is not left out in this drive. It is intensifying efforts to ensure that Nigerians are protected through vaccination. Don't hesitate to get yours now. Once again, welcome to the program as we answer the call. We continue our review of the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nikon, in the year just ended. Tonight, we focus on important policy issues that define the Commission's engagement with prominent public figures and critical stakeholders, such as His Eminence the Sultan of Sokoto and President General Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr III, and the FCT Minister Muhammad Musabelu, among others. Details of these engagements coming your way shortly in our spotlight segment and as usual we also have our regular segment such as the Nikon news diary making the hatch and the quiz stay tuned for this and more don't go away every muslim is a potential pilgrim to make the hatch possible for the ummah the national hatch commission of nigeria narcon is running a hatch saving scheme through jai's bank the scheme allows depositors to gradually save for the hatch over a period of time registration into the hatch saving scheme is ongoing for all muslims muslims wishing to perform hatch can be enrolled into the scheme through the following outlets narcon offices across the country state pilgrims welfare boards agencies and commissions any branch of Jai's bank in the country. Enrollment can also be done directly by logging into dedicated sites for the scheme. Let's participate and support the hatch saving scheme for better hatch services. Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin the program with the news diary as presented from our studio. <laughs> The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubero Dada, has appealed to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to lift the travel ban imposed on Nigerians following the outbreak of the new COVID-19 variant Omicron. The minister made the request when he hosted in his office the Saudi ambassador to Nigeria, Ambassador Faisal bin Ibrahim Al-Gamdi. This was on Thursday, the 13th of January, 2022. Ambassador Zuberu said, as a matter of urgency, the kingdom should review the restrictions as done by other countries who ban Nigeria but have since reversed their stand having studied the efforts of Nigeria in the fight against COVID-19 generally. He commended the Saudis for the measures taken to protect lives, saying Nigeria and Saudi Arabia will continue to nurture the cordial relationship that exists between them for many years. Responding, the Saudi Arabia ambassador Faisal bin Ibrahim expressed satisfaction with the efforts of Nigerian government to contain the pandemic, promising to convey Nigerians' request to the relevant authorities. In other news, the chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakon, al Haji Zikrullah Kunle Hassan, says the commission will provide its zonal and outreach offices with the necessary support so that they can discharge their responsibilities diligently. The chairman, represented by the Commission's Commissioner of Operations, Al Haji Abdullah Himogaji Hardawa, stated this during a training session organized by NACON for its heads of zonal and outreach offices across the country. We have deployed a number of staff to zonal offices and outreach centers. We have given them resources to work with. We felt it is equally important we give the staff the opportunity to understand what is expected of them. 
what they need to do, how to do it, and how to do it better. Al Haji Hatla said the training session is in phases, starting with Abuja, Ilorin, and Port Harcourt outreach centers. It's a flag off, it's one of a series. We intend to replicate the same in Lagos, Kano, and the Bochi, inshallah. So the participants for this training session are basically <coughs> members of staff of the commission deployed to Abuja Outreach Center as well as Elorin and Patakot. Speaking at the occasion, Nakan Commissioner of Policy, Personnel Management and Finance, Al Hajinu Rahasanyaka say, re echoed the importance of the training. This training cannot come at a better time than now, where we are <coughs> where we are losing our veteran or experienced staff to retirement and at the same time a lot of new staff without experience in our core functions are joining the commission. It is also the time that we want our zonal and outreach offices to carry out their assigned functions with little or no interference from the head office. With this kind of mindset by the present board and ESCO, you will all agree with me that there is no better time for this kind of training than now. Resource persons drawn from NACON delivered lectures focusing on operations, supervision, licensing, and many more. These oversight functions, as mentioned by our act, the, the, the commission shall license, regulate, supervise, and perform oversight functions. What is oversight functions? You don't stay in your office and perform oversight functions. Thus, we are going to inspect the reason for the inspection. And the next is the procedure for the inspection of the organization or service providers. So you as head, you are expected to coordinate, to coordinate all of these various uh, uh, representation you have, be it admin, be it account, be it inspector, be it what, what be it tour operators and whatnot. As the head, you need to coordinate this one in order to achieve one and the same objective. There were comments and observations from participants. Alhamdulillah, you are still watching as you answer the call, a public enlightenment presentation that keeps you abreast of the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other Hajj-related matters. During the year under review, Policy issues on Hajj and Umrah matters were top on the agenda of Nikon officials during engagement with prominent public figures and critical stakeholders. What were the issues and their impact on the Hajj and Umrah industry? Answers to these questions in our next segment, Spotlight. Keep watching. Identified its key policies and projects, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, under the leadership of Al-Hajj Zikun Laukule Hassan, is leaving nothing to chance in ensuring that these policies are well understood and embraced by the public. And so, in the course of the year just ending, Nakan hosted or visited key stakeholders in Hajj matters, while the Commission's policies topped the agenda of discussions. On Thursday, the 11th of February 2021, Nakan management paid a curtsy visit to the pioneer chairman of the commission and current minister of the FCT, Muhammad Musa Bello. The Nakan chairman, Al Haji Zikul Hassan, took time to acquaint the minister on the policies being implemented by the current board of the commission. The policies include the Hatch Savings Scheme, establishment of International Hatch Training Institute, Nakan Digital Transformation, Hajj camp rehabilitation through the PPP arrangement. Others are restructuring of operations at the zonal offices and development of the Hajj house. The new board 
has decided to enter into the high savings scheme race. As I speak with you, we have taught virtually all parts of Nigeria to educate Nigerians why there's a need for people to save for Hajj. The whole of Nigerian Muslim communities have come to agree with us that they need to save for Hajj. We need to have an institute where when you come in, you can come and have um, a short course on what the whole operation is all about. As the Honorable Minister is aware, I'm a cleric does not sufficiently qualify to run Hajj. You need to know about all what it takes. Our tenor was basically to bring about stability in Hajj affairs, to, to draw a line and set up the foundation of Hajj affairs. That's why so many aspects of the National Hajj Commission Act that ordinarily we would have pushed hard we deliberately did not because we wanted the modern Hajj management to 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 to, to metamorphose and mature gradually, and then of course as much as possible relate with the stakeholders, you know, to know because everything you want to do, it's always good to build upon what others have done unless it is totally, you know, bad. But it's not from what I know. Also during the year under review, Nakan Chairman led his team on a curtsy visit to the Inspector General of Police, Al Ali Baba Usman, at Louis Edit House, Abuja. The chairman, Al Haji Zikun Lakule Hassan, described the Nigerian police as a strategic partner of the commission, particularly during the Hajj operations. He then highlighted some of the key projects being implemented by the commission to improve on Hajj management in Nigeria. We have created a window where they can save, even if it has to be up to 10 years, and this is in partnership with the leading Islamic bank in Nigeria, Jais Bank, where this fund can also be invested in halal uh, investment and the returns are uh, distributed to these um, subscribers. IG Al Alibaba applauded Nakan's stride towards enhancing Hajj administration, saying all the policies could not have come at a better time. The saving scheme is also something that is being done in other countries for a very long time. I think uh, it needs to be encouraged. People are ready to do that. He said the police will continue to strengthen its relationship with the commission for the benefit of Nigeria. Back in the Hajj House on Wednesday, the 24th of February, 2021, Nakan Chairman al Hazi Zikun Lakunle Hassan and other top officials of the commission played host to the Sultan of Sokoto, al Haji Muhammad Said Abu Bakr III. At the conference hall of the Hajj House, Sultan Said Abu Bakr III met with the Nakan top officials, board members, as well as the general staff of the commission. The Sultan noting with satisfaction his first visit to the Hajj House and interacting directly with staff at all levels. While thanking Allah for the successes recorded at Nakan, Sultan Said Abu Bakr went down memory lane recalling the journey that led to the creation of Nakan. We are most grateful to Almighty Allah for giving us the successes so far we have achieved in running the affairs of Hajj in Nigeria. When he, the Almighty Creator, brought me to this seat, one of the first challenges we faced was ensuring this Hajj Commission takes its firm root in this country. There were papers being circulated at the, at the National Assembly and here and there. We're trying to get it passed, trying to make sure the Hajj Commission takes off as an independent organization. Now, alhamdulillah, we we're almost started together. This is my 14th year, alhamdulillah, as uh, the president of the Supreme Council, and I've seen so much transformation in Hajj affairs in this country. His Eminence then appreciated the past leadership of Nakan for the transformation of Hajj management in Nigeria, saying he has confidence the current executives will build on the legacy. From the founding chairman, the current minister of FCT, who did his two years, two terms, I mean, to the next one, who did his also two terms, one as the executive commissioner, executive commissioner, and then one, and, and then also the other term as executive chairman. That's two terms. 
And I think he, that board, was responsible for bringing Hajj Commission to this edifice. We'd like to commend them for these efforts. But it's a well thought out plan. Similarly, the Sultan encouraged Nakon to continue the collection of Hajj Development Levy as this will guarantee funds for the commission to carry out other responsibilities for the benefits of pilgrims. He said, with time and commitment, Nakan will achieve its financial independence. He further called on Nakan executives to come up with plans that will boost staff morale, saying the commission staff at all levels are stakeholders. The leader of the Nigerian Muslims ended his speech by calling on people to keenly observe COVID-19 protocols as laid down by experts and the federal government. In his remarks at the occasion, Nakan Chairman al Hajj Zikun Lakunle Hassan highlighted the key policies the current board is implementing in order to consolidate on the gains of the previous leaders. Among which are the following. To make Hajj fair affordable, affordable for Nigerian Muslims. To develop a plan of action by which Nigerian pilgrims will spend lesser number of days in the Holy Land the implementation of the high saving scheme, the takeoff of the high training institute, the total digital transformation of high operations, staff welfare, and acquisition of property in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Nakon boss said they have intensified efforts through public-private partnership to enhance the commission's internally generated revenue. <laughs> Still, during the year 2021, Nakan leadership played host to the Saudi Arabian ambassador to Nigeria, Ambassador Faisal bin Ibrahim Al Gandhi, at the Hajj House. The chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan Al Hajj Zikun Lakule Hassan, appreciated the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its support and cooperation to Nigeria, particularly in Hajj operations, saying the Commission's policies are designed in line with international best practices. The embassy. It has been our second office here because it's through the embassy that we get to start our process of Hajj and Umrah. We therefore seek the support of Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, for continued cooperation with the Commission with regards to Hajj and Umrah. The chairman reiterated the commitment of NACON to create more awareness among prospective pilgrims on COVID-19 preventive measures. The Saudi ambassador to Nigeria thanked Nakon for the reception, saying Saudi Arabia has a long history of good relationship with Nigeria. He added that the two countries will continue to work amicably in the area of economy, politics, social development, and many more. Among the dignitaries present during the visit were the chairman Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, Senator Mohammed Adamubul Kachua, and the Nigerian ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Ambassador Yahya Lawal. With the increased optimism among stakeholders for the full resumption of Hajj and Umrah activities in this new year, Nakan is expected to continue with its efforts of advancing its projects for better service delivery. <laughs> The program is as you answer the call. Coming up next is Making the Hatch. When proceeding on Hajj, it is important for intending pilgrims to understand how to perform the various rites of the Hajj as laid down by Islam. Beyond this, they must also know the type of Hajj to perform. Uh, primarily, we have three types of Hajj. On making the Hajj tonight, Sheikh Muhammad Nuru Khalid is our guide. We will be discussing the different types of Hajj pilgrimages. He begins by explaining the concept of Hajj. It is one of the pillars of Islam. You know, we have five pillars in Islam. The fifth pillar, which is Hajj, a journey to the sacred house which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described as the first house of worship established on earth. What are the types of Hajj available for Muslims to perform? We have Hajj Ifrat, we have Hajj Kiran, 
and we have uh, Hajj Tamatu. Now, uh, you can combine Hajj and Umrah in a journey. How then is Hajj Ifrat performed? Uh, Ifrat is a way of uh, intending to perform Hajj only without combining it with laser Hajj. You know, we have a Hajj proper and we have a laser Hajj. Or if we want to put in, in uh, I mean, Arabic, we say we have Hajj, we have Umrah. So on reaching the Mikat, someone will now declare his intention of performing Hajj by saying, Labbaik Allahumma Hajjan. There is no Umrah in the intention. And one will go, will wear his ihram and stay until he finishes uh, his uh, hajj before removing the ihram. What are the other two types of hajj? And to combine the two in one intention, one journey, and one um, performance is called kiran. And to separate the two, but to begin with Umrah, in months of Hajj, you perform Umrah first. In month of, in 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 the period of Hajj, have a a, a pause, have a break, then continue uh, make another move or intention to perform Hajj is known as as Tamatu. In summary, if Rat is Hajj without Umrah, Iran stands for Hajj and Umrah combined and without break in Ihram while Tamatu is Hajj and Umrah with break in Ihram. All these three types of Hajj are optional to intending pilgrims, says Sheikh Muhammad Nur Khalid. Alhamdulillah, up next is the quiz. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, which mosque is referred to as Masjid al-Taqwa? The correct answer is Masjid al quba The winner is Hawa Muhammad from Borno State. She provided the answer ahead of others. Hawa will be contacted on how Nakan will reach her with the prize she won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakan's effort in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week and the question is, name the Hajj landmark referred to as Betel Atik. I repeat. Name the Hajj landmark referred to as Beitel Atik. Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. Before we round off the program, we take some messages from our viewers, including questions seeking clarification. <laughs> Rabia Adamu from KB State sent in the first message. It reads, Assalamu alaikum. Kudos to Nakon Chairman Alej Zikrullah Kule Hassan and the entire staff of the commission for their tireless work to enlighten the Ummah on Hajj and Umrah. I also appreciate Nakon for introducing various projects for the development of the Hajj and Umrah industry. The Amir of Muslim Student Society of Nigeria, Awuchi Polytechnic Branch, Lukman Brema, sent the second message. It says, We want to use this medium to appreciate Nakon management for its hospitality during our excursion to Hajj House. We pray to Almighty Allah to reward you all. Viewers seeking clarification or have questions to ask on any matter relating to Hajj and Umrah management and operations can do so through this program. Relevant officers will be contacted to respond appropriately. We also welcome your messages, comments, observations, and questions through our mobile number and other social media platforms. Remember, you can stop the spread of coronavirus by complying with all preventive measures. Let's support our government in the fight against coronavirus. That's it on this edition of the program as you answer the call. Join me same time next week for another package. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.